really love how that sifter just breaks down this wood ash into this nice fine material. Wood ash, hot ash, whatever you want to call it. This is something that's really good for your garden. And it's a great way to recycle. Tree branches, disease plants from your garden, weeds that you're worried about seeds getting in your compost, burn them all. This wood ash is loaded with essential nutrients that your plants need. If you ever notice your plants are growing big, leafy, and green, but you're not getting a lot of flowers and not a lot of fruit set, kind of like this broccoli here, they're planted a little late. These heads are kind of small. These plants need potassium. Luckily, this wood ash is loaded with potassium. So this is how I'm going to apply it to this garden bed here. You just take a handful and just toss it around the plant. You don't need to use a lot. Once you get a little bit in there, go ahead and water it down. In the off season like now, don't be afraid to take the potash and just spread around your beds also. Make sure when you're doing this, you always wear gloves because this can make your hands burn. Before you go and start loading up your garden with wood ash, check and make sure that you're not giving it to acid loving plants. You do not want to use the wood ash on acid-loving plants. As long as you're burning natural materials, you can use the ash out of your fire pit. You can use it out of the stove in your house if you burn wood during the winter time. Just make sure everything you're using is natural. Do not use any treated lumber or any junk like that. My favorite way to do it is in a burn barrel though. It's a lot safer, fire's not going to get out, and it gets really hot inside here, especially when you got the air vents. If you're not just using the spent ash and you do want to make this yourself, make sure you get a decent pile to start with. This is going to start burning pretty quick. You'll notice if you don't keep feeding it, the fire is going to go out. So I've got some branches to start here. I got some old tomato plants. I got some leaves over here I'm going to use to get the fire going. And we're going to get it started and let it burn. I started out pretty small just to get it going. We don't want a raging inferno. It's pretty dangerous. So if we get this started, it starts burning hot. We're going to take all this and just keep feeding it into the fire. It's better to start like this too because when you're burning this, you're giving this wood time to burn. If you keep feeding more wood into here, the fire is going to keep going up. We want the fire to concentrate on this wood first to start breaking it down to ash. And then once more goes in there, that is also going to burn and break down into ash. I'm going to let this burn for a little bit because I want all this to break down into hot coals. It'll coat the whole entire bottom so I get a nice even burn when I add the next stuff. This feels so nice. It's like 35 degrees out here. This fire is nice and warm really starting to heat up now we got them white coals in the bottom this is where i'm going to start feeding more of this stuff into here look how the fire is just eating this branch you can watch it sink down that's what we're looking for Since she's real hot, now's a good time to put in the greener stuff too. Lights out, giant crimson tomato. Got a powdery mildew zucchini. Anything bad you're worried about putting in your compost is not going to survive this fire. You'd be very surprised at how much this breaks down. That smaller bucket I showed you earlier was actually three barrels full. So I got maybe one and a half, two gallons of ash out of it, but you don't need a lot in your garden. So a little bit goes a long way. When you do decide you are done, you got enough ash in here, do not put the fire out with water. Let the fire go out naturally on its own and let it sit for at least 24 hours. Once you're all cooled, scoop it out, run it through a sifter like I did to get this nice fine wood ash right here. And you can even store this. 
as long as water doesn't get into it, it'll last a very long time. You can use it for fertilizer next year. Or if you want to be like Paul Gauchi and back to Eden, take these, toss them in with your chickens and let them compost them. Don't waste anything. Thanks for watching.